Yo, what's up, everybody? So, uh, before I can start my talk, I just wanted to know uh, how many of you guys hated physics in your class, in your engineering? Wow, that's a lot of people. So, this is, <laughs> yeah, even I failed in physics, <laughs> no issues. So, but I'm presenting the talk here. <laughs> so, uh, today I'm going to tell you guys how you will be able to use physics uh, in order in your daily life, which is used in your daily lives, uh, and how you can use hardware in the physics to hack into devices and do some cool stuff with it. So let's start the talk. So my name is Rishikesh Somchatwar. Uh, my interest lies in IoT, automotive, hardware, and radio security. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also in love with GNU Radio Companion and doing projects with it. I've been a speaker at Hackfest in 2021, which was held in Canada. It was a remote conference. Uh, I've been a speaker at Car Hacking Village at B-Sides Delhi in 2019, and Def Camp Romania as well in 2019. And I've presented at various other scientific conferences, so much more into uh, IEEE and ACM stuff as well. Um, I, I am the OASP Nagpur chapter lead, so um, if you guys want to attend some OASP Nagpur meetups, then you guys are welcome to. We, uh, we actually conduct security meetups every month or so. My Twitter handle is Storytelling Hacker. Actually, it's S Story T L N Hacker. So it's like when you pronounce it, it comes it out as Storytelling Hacker. And I have a podcast named as The Storytelling Hacker, which is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts as well. You guys can listen to my podcast. I review research papers there, tell some stories, and a lot of stuff there. But it's explicit content, so make sure that you guys hear it alone. Uh, so first and foremost thing. What do you mean by hacking with physics? Any guesses? Anybody can shout out from your place and tell any guess. That's cool. So, any guesses? So, sensors, lights, electronics, all use the principles of physics. That's why hacking with physics. So, let's talk about sensors first. Get our basic, let's get our basics clear. Let's understand these concepts first. And then we'll be able to understand how we will be able to use these techniques to hack into these signals. So a sensor is an electrical device which measures the physical properties of the surrounding, takes the input from the surrounding and gives out the output. As simple as that. Just it takes the input from the, uh, takes the, input from the surrounding and gives out the output. As simple as that. So there are different types of sensors. Electric sensors, mechanical sensors, optical sensors, temperature sensors, chemical sensors and so on and so forth. So the electric sensors takes the electrical stimuli uh, the signal goes to the sensor and then it gives out the electrical signal. The magnetic sensor does the same and everything, like it happens uh, the same, so on and so forth. Uh, so there are two types of sensors. One is the active sensor, second is the passive sensor. Guys, get these basics very clear. It's just one or two slides, just pay attention and then you guys are going to love the applications of it. So classification, this is how the sensors are being classified. Passive infra, uh, infrared motion sensor is an example of a passive sensor. Magneto magnetometer is an example of a passive sensor. Gyroscope and accelerometer is an example of a passive sensor. Infrared range sensor is an example of an active sensor. Radars, everybody knows about radars here. So radar is an example of an active sensor. Sonar is also an example of an active sensor. Yeah, active sensor. So where are these sensors used? These sensors are used in industrial control systems, ICS and SCADA systems. And these are basically installed, these sensors are basically installed into the RTUs, the remote terminal units of the industrial control systems. IoT devices even use sensors in it. You guys have seen uh, smart devices having uh, sensors installed in it. Automotive, these days, radio, uh, these days electric vehicles are uh, pretty much uh, common these days, so sensors are being used there as well. Drones is an example where uh, sensors are being used and healthcare devices. So for example, of a medical infusion pump, that is also a great example of healthcare devices where sensors are being used. So sensors do the actuation stuff. Decision making on the sensor data, that is the meaning, simple meaning, clear cut meaning of actuation. So like I said, the sensor takes the input from the surrounding, from the environment, processes it, and then gives out the, uh, gives out the output to the controller, and then the actuation happens. So sensors, a new attack vector, like I said. So guys, make, uh, one important thing, it's not just the hardware which is not secure, it's not just the software which is not secure, it's not even just the embedded which is not secure, but it is also the sensors which are not secure these days. 
So, before I can even get into sensor hacking and these techniques, let me talk about, let me talk about some of the basics first. Guys, get your basics clear. Only one to two slides, pay full concentration and attention on it, and then we'll, we guys are going to see the demos out of it. So, some basic terminologies. EMI, electromagnetic interference. So I'm going to read out the definitions first. I know that sounds boring, but can't help it. So electromagnetic interference is also called radio frequency interference, when in the radio frequency spectrum is a disturbance generated by an external source that affects an electrical, electrical circuit by electromagnetic induction, electrostatic coupling, or conduction. In simple language, guys, unwanted, unwanted noise happening in an unwanted circuit, electromagnetic interference, as simple as that. ADC, analog to digital converter. So an ADC, um, a microphone is a great example of an ADC. So for instance, I'm talking with you guys and my voice is getting transmitted, uh, my, uh, uh, my microphone is receiving those signals, my voice signals through the ADC. Uh, and uh, as a mic can be an example of an ADC. So it takes an analog values and converts it into digital values. ADC, that's it. And DAC, micro, uh, microphone was an example of an ADC. Even though microcontroller, uh, microphones has an ADC installed in it, but I just wanted to give a lame, explain you guys in layman's terms. And DAC, DAC, uh, DAC is basically digital to analog converter. So what you guys basically do is, uh, whatever the digital information which is being stored in your, to your laptop, that gets converted into analog signals through the speakers. So a speaker is a great example of a DAC. Uh, ADC and DAC are just like reverse to each other. So I need answers from you. What do you guys see? It's a Wi-Fi router. How are you guys going to hack it? Shout it from your place. Doesn't matter. Come on. Come on, I need answers from you. Come on, guys. OK, at a web applications level, you guys all are well web experts, so I don't have to explain you that thing. Uh, at, an, uh, at a wireless level, uh, what actually you can do is use air crack NG, Wi-Fi, and fluxions, and tools like that to uh, use uh, to do Wi-Fi hacking and do uh, deauthentication stuffs and things like that. What about electronics? Anybody aware about IoT hacking stuff here? Yeah, one guy. Yeah, yeah, you are JTAG. Yeah, that, that's a great exam. That's a great answer. You are JTAG could be a great example of it. Or hacking that, uh, opening up the device, dumping up the firmware, and then getting those hard coded credentials, credential values, and then doing some hacking with it can be a great example of it. A any errors from the product designers level? Okay, no issues. So any other attack vectors? Any other attack vector? Frequencies, yeah, great, ex great answer, great answer. One more, I need just one more answer. Firmware related stuff, yes. So you guys, you guys have given great answers to me. No, uh, no issues with that. But let's think out of the box today. Let's think in a different perspective, in a, in a bit more, more dis uh, different uh, manner the, uh, today. So today, we are going to use light in order to hack into these devices. That's how we are going to hack the device. We are going to use light today. So here's the problem. Stay with me. Stay with me till the demo. You will understand everything. Uh, for now, just pay attention. <laughs> so routers and switches have LEDs installed in them, which blink at a very fast speed and are not visible by the human eye. The blinking LEDs have information which is modulated in it. These LEDs are connected to the select lines on the CPU of the device, which leads them to blink at a very fast speed. So all you have to do, so there's a device, there's a Wi-Fi device over here, and it has lights in it. All you have to do is just to capture those light signals and get the information. But the information there is modulated. So how are you guys going to do it? So here's, the another, so here's the answer to it. So there's a uh, tool by Joe Grant, one of the most famous hardware hackers out there, Optic Spy. So it's going to convert, uh, so it's going to search for optical covert channels and uh, co covert channels that may exist within the device. So it's like any information, uh, no, it's not a side channel. I'll explain that. Uh, can, be a, can be an example of it, but uh, yeah, you are just close, close enough to the answer. Yeah. So, um, it will, uh, it will search for optical covert channels, so it's like uh, it's going to check for information leakage which is happening onto the lights, and that's how it's going to tell the information. So 
first let me explain what is what does uh, an optic spy literally means and what are the things which are actually installed in, in an optic spy so photodiode is an example of an opt uh, photodiode the optic spy has photodiode in it then along with that it has the amplifiers and the threshold detector and the serial to usb connector so this is how it looks like there is a photodiode then there is a gain adjust then there is threshold adjust uh, threshold voltage adjust then there's polarity selection for checking out the polarities. And then there's USB for converting of those uh, signals into uh, packet form and then uh, doing it in the, uh, like looking at the, um, looking at that in an information, looking at those information. And the, so what is a photodiode? Most important thing. So photodiode is a device that converts light into current. It's an optical sensor. Like I said, we are talking about sensors here. And he used a Vichai semiconductor here, which is BPW1R in the optic spy. So this is just a like, this is just a part number. So let me show you guys a demo so that you guys will have a better understanding of it. There's no video, uh, there's no audio in it. So this is the Wi-Fi router. There's a light on the Wi-Fi router. This is the optic spy. And there's a photodiode. So you're capturing those light signals through your optic spy. And the information is getting demodulated. And that's how you're going to see the information which is being transmitted through lights. And we are going to watch the video at 8x speed. Yep. Information leakage, right guys? So, so let's get back to sensors now. So it was interesting, right? It was not, yeah. So sensors, a new attack vector, like I said, it's not just the software, it's not just the hardware, it's not just the embedded, but it's also the sensors which are not secure. So this single paper is enough to give you dopamine checks. <laughs> the detection of EMI, uh, e electromagnetic interference attacks on sensor-based system. Take snapshot of it if you want to. So this is an amazing paper, guys. So, so this is the actual diagram of how sensing and actuation actually happens. So let me explain this diagram to you guys. This is the real world. The sensor takes the sensing from the real world. Is the, yeah, you guys can see the arrow. So the sensor takes the sensor from the real world uh, signals. Then the signal goes to the ADC, the, like I said from the basics, the analog to digital converter. Then it gets convert, then it goes to the processor, the processor processes it. And then it goes to the actuator, and then the actual actuation happens. A clear example of it could be a gyroscope. So a gyroscope uh, is basically a sensor which takes the in input signals from the surroundings, gives it to the ADC, uh, takes the input from the surrounding, gives it to the ADC, the ADC converts, gives it to the process, uh, processor, and then the processor takes it to, uh, gives it to the actuator, and that's how the flight uh, of the drone uh, is rotating, and that's how the drone works. And uh, the, one more example is uh, car. So whenever you are taking a reverse of a car, there's a sensor installed in it which beeps every time, beep, 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 and then it actually tells you that uh, if there is any object uh, which is uh, which is obstructing the reversal of a car. So it does the same thing, and that's how at the actuator's level, it avoids the crash. So, so the thing here is that the, there is no authentication happening at sensor level. This means that anybody can use his own sensor into the system and input his own, uh, his own signals in it. So that makes a system vulnerable to sensor spoofing attack. In a microcontroller, the microcontroller has no choice but to trust the measurements. And the attacker can use EMI to inject these signals 
uh, easily uh, using radio equipment or change the sensor regardless of the sensor output which is happening in, uh, inside the sensor. So there's a demo. Uh, I'm going to show you guys one more demo. There are three to five demos actually in this video. This is the second one. So enjoy. This is the example of how you should not do the attack, but uh, your concepts will be clear if you watch this video properly. The second attacker machine uh, demo of this uh, particular demo. Welcome to the demo. Uh, so what I've done is, l l l show the screen. So what I've done is I've used up the attacker code into this Arduino which is connected to the ultrasonic sensor. And uh, what I'm doing right now is using the INVH application to see the measurements of this particular uh, ultrasonic sound waves. So you guys can see that uh, this there is a movement seen onto the signals into the graph by just by uh, listening to my voice. I'm turning off the fan. Now you guys can see that there is no voice happening ab apart from my uh, apart from my voice. So this is the ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensor has sound waves in it. And ultrasonic sensor has sound wave in it, like I said. Just making it a bit. And so the microphone, the phone's microphone is literally taking the ultrasonic sound waves from the sensor, and the output is shown onto the phone. So this is the graph which you guys can observe. You guys can observe the graph. My right? There's a difference. Microphone, phone's microphone in front of the ultrasonic sensor. Even though the That's graph it. is turned upside down, but I just wanted to show you guys the graph. And uh, this is the perfect example of the attack, how the attack should be done. I'll play it with VLC. Hello everybody, welcome yeah. to the presentation of the, of the demo of the transduction attack. Now, so this is known as the transduction attack. What has one of the toughest attack uh, which is seen because at a conceptual level this is a very tough attack. I'm not sure how done here is I have flash uh, will do it practically sensor systems code into this particular Arduino which is connected to the wall uh, this is acting like a wall as an object and uh, what I'm doing right now is I am looking at uh, the code is already been flashed I'm looking at the serial monitor and you guys can see that the difference between this particular sensor to the wall is coming as 31 centimeters now I have another system which I showed you in the second video. Now I flash the attacker code into this uh, system and it is being flashed uh, and it it it, uh, it has the attacker code in it and it has been connected to the power bank. Now I am just going to use as an interference and look at the screen. That's how the electromagnetic interference And look happens. at the this thing. Now you guys can see that the interference is getting created and uh, the values are getting manipulated. That's how you manipulate the values. So that's it, guys. So, so that's how you do the transduction attack. Uh, like I said, uh, this is the normal system which is taking uh, input from the surroundings and then uh, giving out uh, the output. And uh, this is the attacker sensor. That's how you do the spoof attack on a 30 degree angle sometimes. Not mandatory to have the 30 degree angle, but just an example. And this is the code. And this is my code, the attacker sensor's code. And this is how the readings can be manipulated and the sensors are tricked. And uh, so here the attacker's main objective is to add malicious signal to the sensor output and manipulate its readings. So like this is how the sensors are being tricked. Now, since we have looked at the sensor-based attacks, we, we can move forward and look at the attacks which are actually happening at the ADC, which makes me like ADC. So, uh, so this is the standard diagram of how it looks like. The sensor take. Uh, the, there's a sensor. There's a microcontroller. The sensor gives out gives the signal to the ADC's microcontroller. Uh, microcontroller's ADC, and that's how the values are getting manipulated. And then what we do is we use a different attacking signal here, and that's how we manipulate the ADC. Now. Guys, I have uh, explained this uh, particular complete research paper and uh, my work as well in the podcast as well. But uh, this is a much more in-depth and descriptive manner and the videos are shown here as well. So, and so here the, uh, so 
at, in this particular case, what we are doing is we are actually abusing the ADC. So here this ADC is abused to work as a demodulator for the attack sig attacking signal. And by injecting a uh, signal with a frequency that exceeds the sampling rate of the ADC. Which makes me think, like, guys, we are actually attacking at an ADC's level of a hardware. Now, this is cool. Like, I've never seen this uh, amazing uh, things done by the, the, the researchers over there. So, which makes me think that this is good stuff, right? So, here's an another example of the air conditioner. An air conditioner, uh, an AC adjusts the temperature of the air according to the room temperature. The attacker can remotely send the attacking signal to hold the sensor input, and the sensor can be deceived to give hot air. Now, imagine this attack, like, if you're talking about this attack at a very personal level, like an air conditioning or the things which are happening on our home, but imagine this attack can be used in a power plant or a nuclear reactor or pitch of a fly of the flywire helicopter. Like, if I'm talking about helicopters, let's talk about drones. So, let's talk about the attack vectors of drones. These are very crazy attack vectors, I would say. Physical attack vectors, you can just use your gun to, you know, attack the drones. Second is the radio communication. Uh, you can attack the drone at, uh, by, by, at a Wi-Fi level, at a Zigbee's, or uh, at a radio frequencies level by using radio stuff. And by doing software hacks, everybody loves Sammy Kamkar here, right? The, the skyjacking attack by Sammy Kamkar. So, uh, software hacking. Positioning. So, what you guys are doing, you guys are uh, basically using tools like HackRF to spoof the GPS signals and then do some positioning-based attacks. And sensors. So I want you guys to see how you can hack drones with sound. Now, this is the user controller. There's a flight controller. Flight controller is basically the brain of the drone. Sens sensors basically uh, are taking, doing the, its sensing work. Rotors are working as the actuator. I've explained this before in the previous slide. So what it actually does is the user controls takes the input via radio frequency, like there's a transmitter there and there's a receiver there. The transmitter transmits the radio signals via the receiver. Uh, and then that's how the flight controller works. And the flight controller gives the output to the, um, it takes the input from the sensors and then that's how it gives the output to the sensors. And that's how the rotor, uh, the, this thing, the, what do we say, the drone works. Now, here's a great example of uh, mechanical resonance. Now, it's not possible to play this video, it's just a funny video. What, guy, what uh, happens in this video is, the guy actually uh, shouts at a very high-pitched high voice, and that's, what, uh, and that's how the glass gets broken, and that is an example of mechanical resonance. So, drones have memes, which is microelectromechanical services, um, uh, systems, uh, 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 as the gyroscope installed in them, and due to sound noise, the accuracy of the gyroscope gets affected. So this is the science behind it. Now I'm going to show you guys how it actually happens. Listen to the voice here. Without a question. And with this, that's how this video has worked. Again, it goes upwards. again gets affected. These are the sensor readings of the gyroscope outputs and things like that. Yeah, so now let's talk about some mitigations first. Uh, let's talk about mitigations. But before that, the tip of the, the, like one of the most important thing which I wanted to discuss with you guys, that's the reason why I came to this conference. Let's explain, uh, let me explain you guys the thought experiment. You guys are with me, right? Cool. So, is it possible to dim the lights from the back side? Is it possible? Okay, that's fine. So, I want you guys to close your eyes first. Close your eyes. Be on your place and close your eyes. Now, imagine... Keep your eyes closed, guys. Keep your eyes closed. You are sitting in your house. It's 1 p.m. in the afternoon. 
you are sitting in your house and it is 1 p.m. in the afternoon. It's pretty warm outside, so you decide to turn on the AC. It's pretty warm, so you decide to turn on the AC. You observe that the AC senses the room temperature and gives out cold air. You observe that the AC senses the room temperature and gives out cold air. Now you observe that the AC sensor of the AC can be tricked into injecting your own malicious signals. Keep your eyes closed guys, keep your eyes closed. Even though if you are not able to imagine, that's fine. Keep your eyes closed. You observe that the AC senses the room temperature and gives out cold air. Now you observe that the AC sensor of the AC can be tricked into injecting your own malicious signal and you do that. The AC gives out hot air. It's getting warmer and warmer again. It's getting warmer and warmer again. So, mission completed. You guys can open your eyes now. Please turn on the lights now. <laughs> you guys can, you guys would have taken the video as the reference point to observe, like to imagine these things. And ladies and gentlemen, you just did a thought experiment. It was a small one, but you did that. So imagine, like that's the power of thought experiments, right? You guys can literally imagine what are the hacks which, are, which can be done into our daily world. And that's the power of our mind. I have seen people crying that, uh, not exactly crying, but whining about the fact that uh, there is not much work done, like they don't have enough resources and hardware and things like that to do it. But my point is, if you have the way and you have your own thoughts with, your, with yourself, then you can literally imagine these attacks and do it on your own. So you just did a thought experiment, pat yourself on your back. So last point, turning off the sensors, uh, mitigations like I said, turning off the sensors, uh, sensory readings by using a passive sensor is a good idea as a mitigation. Using the ADC which can take the sampling rates of the system is also a good idea. And uh, this, uh, the last idea has been implemented by the company, so using a microcontroller which can determine the fake signals is also a good idea. So, like I said, it's not just the hardware, it's not just the software, it's not just the embedded, but it's also the sensors which are very important and can be hacked. And I just wanted to say that keep thinking out of the box. There's a reason why all of the hackers are, have become great hackers and uh, like, like I said, uh, like I say that we all, we all are sitting on someone else's shoulder and we'll expect someone else to sit on so our shoulders too someday. So that, make, that makes us a better community, that makes us the power of hacking, like that's, that's what makes us hackers. And one more thing, like do more thought experiments. And uh, they, these are the papers for reference, you guys can read these papers. Uh, one of them is by Joe Grant and other one is XLED. This. And this, this one of this is my favorite detection of EMI attacks on sensor systems. Every paper is great, to be honest. And here's the reference. So that's it from me, guys. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Hi, uh, it's Pratmesh this side. Yeah, uh, Pratmesh. Uh, when when I was seeing that the you you are giving the examples of cars and everything, uh, what if two cars are uh, do, coming just in reverse, right? And uh, they, Sorry? the two cars yeah, yeah, are, yeah. are uh, on the opposite side are coming, are coming in reverse and they are coming close to each other. Does the, the same kind of issues issue happen with them as well? I mean, because they both are in uh, the boat. Uh, the same both kind of issue happens with? The interference and all, and all of that. So obviously it's, it, it's kind of a uh, bigger issue with a lot of cars that manufacture, right? Because two cars are coming together and yeah. they are interfering the signals and everything. So it, is, is, is it is it happen in real time? Because I have not seen that. Well, yeah. well, uh, anybody, everybody knows about Tesla, right here. Yeah, yeah. So Tesla cars were hacked using one of these techniques. Oh. Uh, I have not mentioned it because I was focusing on the uh, like rather than the impact, I was focusing on the main concepts. You guys can do replicate this uh, this particular attack by using your own microcontrollers into your own systems. So, but I won't be responsible for it. So it can be. I mean, it, there's a this there's a huge issue in the. Is this an issue or is is it is it? Well, this is an issue. This is this an is issue. Still there. Okay. Yeah, it is still there. Uh, but at the mitigations, uh, I have discussed that uh, some of there are some microcontrollers which are specifically designed to determine the fake signals. Okay. So 
that can be one of the exa uh, one of the mitigations to prevent these attacks could could you name name one of the example of so uh, it's like it depending on, it depends upon the firmware you cannot name a particular microcontroller okay it's like uh, the way the firmware has been coded according to that you make the changes and then you flash it to your device and that's how the firmware, uh, microcontrollers work Understood. thank you yeah. so, thank you guys